So today we are going to continue with the new topic. So now we're going to move on to something called shafts design. <clears throat> So moving forward, we're going to look at a lot of components. Lah. Maybe it's going to be shafts. Maybe it's going to be keys or coupling. Maybe it is screw and fastener. Maybe it can be gear and bearings and chains. There are so many components lah, that we can, uh, that we are going to go through later on. However, the main design principle, the main failure criterion is uh, almost the same as what we have learned lah, during design for statics and also design for fatigue loading. So we are going to use uh, the same basic principle lah, to determine whether your component will fail or not. So today we're going to look at shafts. So there are multiple, multiple configurations of shafts that you can do. However, some of the general consideration when you are designing shafts is, for example, you're going to look at uh, what kind of material are you using? What is the geometric layout of your shaft? How is it aligned? So we are going to look at uh, stresses and strength, whether it is static strength or fatigue strength. And we're going to look at uh, deflection of the shaft, how uh, bending of your shaft is going to look like. Does it bend? Does it have any torsional deflection? Torsional meaning is going to twist one way and the other. The shaft is here. The twisting. So bending is bending. Lah. Once you support, maybe here and here and over here and over here and you apply a load it's going to bend and uh, what are the slope at bearings what are the shear deflections due to traverse loading and uh, one more <coughs> important thing is something called vibration due to natural frequency so this is uh, with regards to critical speed of the shaft itself. So this one, maybe you have learned this a lot in your vibrations class. So there are many things that we have to consider when we are designing shafts. So we have to kind of look at uh, some of the theories first. Later on, we'll do some calculation. So there are a lot of shafts that you can uh, get from the industry. Something that you are used to most, most probably this one, you've seen this before. This is a crankshaft, it's put, it's mounted inside an engine. You can uh, look at a uh, transmission shaft. So most shafts are pretty much stepped. So there, there are a lot of steps and there are multiple diameters lah, when you are designing this uh, shaft. Uh, input shaft, you've got a line shaft. This one is together with a coupling already. You can see here, this is what we call a flexible coupling. Ini. Flexible coupling. Machine shaft, so this uh, shaft is machined from a solid block. Lah. Machine from a solid block. This one is a spindle shaft, counter shaft, and sometimes you've got output shaft. So a lot of uh, shaft types that you can uh, take a look at. Some uh, more uh, shaft types. Maybe you've seen uh, some sort of like this. This one comes with a universal join. It can uh, some sort of flex, uh, flex in uh, that particular direction. Lah. So this one CV. 
cylindrical cylindrical joint. <clears throat> some shafts they've got some sort of boot uh, rubber thing that can absorb the vibration. This one also you've got this particular joint. Mm, so many more things are. Huh? However, if you want to uh, really <coughs> categorize it, it can be uh, some sort of like this. Lah. Whether it's just a plain uh, transmission shaft, whether you have some sort of step, you can call it a step shaft. Or you can, uh, this one is very, very unique, lah, tank shafts. <coughs> However, if you mount uh, your shaft, you need to put a lot more things lah, <clears throat> on your shaft. One of the main thing is your bearing. So bearings might go, in this case, it's at the end, lah, either left and the right hand side. And you've got all your bearings. And then uh, this side, you've got a step, step shaft. And this one is mounted to a hub. So how does the hub look like? It's probably uh, geared maybe, or maybe some sort of pulley that is to deliver a uh, belt, uh, connected to a belting. Maybe it is to deliver power, or maybe it's uh, using that particular power that you are rot rotating. So kalau ada hub, most likely you're gonna step it. Nah. So you don't, want, you don't want your hub to uh, crawl forward lah to the to the side and you need to lock it also uh, typically people are using this one lah key only thing is when you have a key you need to really machine your <coughs> your your shaft lah so if you don't machine properly you're gonna have uh, cracks due to fatigue loading so those are some of the disadvantage Unless you're doing something like this, lah. This one is a <coughs> press fit. So this one, uh, the moment you lock this uh, nut and bolt, it's going to have a uh, press fit, some sort of wedge, wedge action that is going to clamp the whole thing. So the whole thing is held together by friction. And uh, this one, the whole thing is held together by mechanical lock lah, by using a key. This one, this one is a pulley. So, typical uh, deployment of your shaft is going to be looking somewhat like this. Lah. So you need to be able to identify all the components and uh, select proper dimension lah, for your shafts. Sometimes you mount your shaft in a, a vertical direction or axial direction. Kalau macam uh, yang kamu tengok tadi ni kan, most likely it's going to have some sort of bending load to the, to the ground lah, most likely. Ini you confirm lah, sebab dia ada belting eh. Maybe this one on the other side. So your shaft might somewhat bend, bend like that. But sometimes you mount your shaft vertical. So when you mount your shaft vertical, it's carrying some axial load on your shaft. Something like this, huh? it's going to carry some axial load, meaning your force is somewhat like that along the axis of the shaft. Kalau macam yang ni, dia macam perpendicular lah kan? Dia macam 90 degrees. Yang ni, dia along the axis of the shaft lah. So some when you are using like this, uh, generally best for only one bearing to carry the axial load on the shoulder. So you want bearings to support your load. For example, in this one, this one you've got this bearing lah, to support the load. So if you have uh, <coughs> uh, configurations of your shafts, Maybe you're gonna have to draw something like this. Lah. This is your bearing, this is the gear. 
however you want to mount your shaft configuration whether your bearing is at the outer side any bearing to luar bearing bearing ini bearing duk kat uh, luar dengan ini duk tengah eh. anyway uh, our bearings inilah ini yang tadi eh. ini how it looks like ini bearing kat sini dengan bearing kat sini is similar to this one ini <coughs> bearing kat luar bearing kat luar ini pun bearing kat luar bearing kat luar so if you were if you need to design uh, shafts Typically, the drawing that you are going to produce for the shaft design is going to look like this. So if you look at this drawing, what, what is the main length of the shaft? The main um, length is 11.5. What are the diameters? So this one is a stepped shaft. Step shaft. You've got multiple diameters coming from uh, this one. Is this diameter in inch or millimeter? Most likely is an inch code. So I am getting from. Uh, oh, let's read. What is the unit? Most likely inch. Uh. Never mind. So this one is uh, 1.18. This one, the diameter is 1.5. Berapa ke diameter yang ni? Can you find out? Where is it labeled? Here, right? The biggest diameter is 2mm lah. Bukan 2mm lah. Most likely 2 inch ni. Besar sikit ni. Kalau tu MM jenuh, jenuh kita nak uh, machining kita punya shaft ni. But uh, one distinctly clear uh, item you can see here, you've got a keyway. Key. Keyway. 2X lah, kiri dan kanan. Ini most likely dia nak slot, itulah nak slot hub tu. Kamu punya hub. Dia yeah. buat step shaft. And then hujung ni most likely bearing lah. Ini bearing. Bearing yang dia pakai. Is it the same? One. Ini 1.18 lah. Besar sikit. <laughs> so multiple places uh, in the drawing. It is zoomed and uh, it is uh, detailed out lah here. What are you going to look at? What is the chamfer? Chamfer yang very small lah, 0.009. More slightly is in inch lah. So they are the chamfer. They want to avoid uh, cracking at that particular area. Tapi dekat step ni memang dia flat lah. Dia memang buat tak ada chamfer lah. Dia nak bagi lock nicely lah. Okay, so inilah drawing yang kamu kena hasilkan. But before you get to this drawing, you need to calculate lah berapa diameter yang sesuai. Inilah yang susahnya. So you need to calculate it properly depending on the load. Depending on the load and depending on the optional condition. Sama you've got uh, one more drawing. Ini most likely US punya company eh. How it works lah eh. <laughs> US. This one is Chinese lah. Tapi universal lah. Wherever you work, engineering, we can communicate lah. You just have to read the drawing. Now, this one is probably in uh, millimeter lah. Nampak logic sikit lah. 17mm. This one is stated lah. Certain places, dia letak tolerance. 21 plus minus 0.2. Do we have any tolerance here? Yeah, you've got some tolerance also. Critical, critical area, dia bagi tolerance yang fix. For example, this one, 1.5 plus minus 0.0025. Over here, 
what are the critical dia kena control macam ni designer ni kan dia control ni 30.7 plus 0.05 plus 0.037 oh itu very strict lah if you have too strict uh, tolerance memang machining akan jadi mahal lah nanti vendor akan quote kamu punya part cost akan jadi mahal 18 plus 0 minus 0.01 ini senang sikit lah nak kontrol. Ini nak kontrol jenuh lah. Jenuh sikit nak kontrol. What other places? Uh, ini pun dia kontrol juga. Uh. 170.6 plus 0 minus 0 0.1. So ini dia just control everywhere in the dimension lah. Uh. Kadang-kadang uh, benda yang dia tak bagi dimension tu dia pakai general lah. General punya tolerance. General ikut range lah. So kamu jadi designer, bagus lah kontrol banyak-banyak ni kan. Tapi pending lah vendor. Kalau satu point dah out kan, memang dah reject the whole lot. So vendor marah lah. Kalau benda yang tak perlu kontrol, tak usah kontrol lah. Kalau benda yang uh, very very tight, kalau kamu tak kontrol memang tak tak, lak, tak boleh masuk lah kan. Fitting tak boleh masuk, memang tu boleh tu kena kontrol lah. So tolerance is going to save your life lah later on. <coughs> okay, next. Some more. Ini ada cross section pula eh. Cross section. Berapa depth dia? Eh? Oh, dia tebuk dalam ni. So, next. How do you decide whether you're going for hollow shaft or a solid shaft? How do you do that? So, most likely hollow shaft, uh, which is this one. Eh? This is going to be less expensive. Huh? This is going to be cheaper. This one is going to be expensive. Because of the material, huh? the part weight, the material cost, you need a lot more for the solid shaft. Sometimes you do not need a solid shaft. Sometimes a hollow shaft, uh, a hollow shaft is enough. So if you read here, you are going to look at what are the difference lah, between hollow shaft and a solid shaft? So some of the key item here is that hollow shafts, they are stronger than solid shaft with the same weight. If you, uh, if you cannot, if you want to control the part price, you might want to go for hollow shaft lah, because if you have the same weight, the hollow shaft is definitely going to be much much bigger diameter lah. Kalau solid shaft mungkin besar tu je dapat. Cross section area lah. Oh. Hollow shaft boleh berapa lagi besar lah. <coughs> Stiffness of the hollow shaft is more than the same weight of a solid shaft. That is uh, clear cut. Pank also, hollow shaft is much better. If you compare it with the weight of a solid shaft, lah, natural frequency also same. Hollow shaft is costlier than solid shaft. Uh, this one is debatable, lah, depending on the material material size, lah. <coughs> uh, hollow shaft do not transfer more power, but the power to weight ratio of the hollow shaft is more as compared to solid shaft. Yeah, power to weight ratio. Solid shafts when subjected to bending are stronger than that of a hollow shaft. <clears throat> so which is better depends on the application of the shaft. So solid shaft is better for power transmission. Uh, so clear cut for power transmission, best if you use a solid shaft. For load bearing type of shaft, it is always better to ho use a hollow shaft because it is a higher stiffness and also higher rigidity. A shaft for transmission of torque, for example, for crankshafts, drive shaft, most likely is going to be uh, choose for solid. Lah. 
solid shaft as the, uh, the best one. So one thing that we need to know is that uh, there is something called J. J is polar moment inertia. Polar moment inertia. So polar moment inertia, J is for, this one is for solid. Solid. This one is for hollow. Hollow, they are the uh, outer diameter, tolak dengan inner diameter lah. So, how, uh, how is the performance? It depends on this particular thing lah. Lagi besar J, lagi kurang lah shear stress dekat shaft tu. So, if you have a very big J, shear stress dekat shaft akan lebih kurang, akan lebih mengurang dengan banyak lah sebab di bawah kan. It's on the lower side. So shafts, uh, in general, we need to keep it short. The longer you put your shaft, the more bending you're going to get. Lah. It's going to bend. So if you have a uh, very short shaft, you can support your shaft properly with bearings. If you, since you have uh, the load, nah, compared to a longer one, or you know, ah, kamu memang akan uh, kena a lot of bend in a in a longer one. Place necessary stress riser. Ini yang kita tengok hari tu lah. Certain time, certain things, ah, uh, you need to put stress riser to alleviate any problems of crack. Use in inspective steel for deflection critical shaft because all steels have essentially the same modulus of elasticity. Early in the design of any shaft, an estimate is usually made where the strength and deflection is the critical factor. So it depends on uh, how your load is. So you got shafts, you need to uh, transfer torque to a hub. For example, in this case, Ini adalah gear lah. Eh. So gear dengan shaft, kadang-kadang something like this, you can use some sort of, ini namanya spline. Gigi-gigi macam ni. Dia macam geared teeth lah. So ini nak transfer power senang lah. Keyway macam ni lah. Ini key. So this key is uh, put inside there. Pins also you've got uh, press fit, sometimes you've got tapered fit. So keys are one of the most effective. Lah. It is easy to assembly and uh, you can even use it as a as a fuse lah, lebih kurang lah. Kan electrical fuse, kadang-kadang dia orang jaga, katalah dia orang electrical fuse 20M kan. Kenapa ada electrical fuse? Kerana dia nak jaga wiring lah. Dia takut wiring overload nanti uh, wire akan terbakar. Eh. So fuse ni memang dia something yang design untuk cut off electricity. So kadang-kadang you can even design your key to break away lah. Kalau ada sudden power overload. So kamu punya shaft tu selamat lah. Uh, yang masalahnya key saja. So kena tukar key dan tak ada masalah lagi lah. So you can even design it to be a weak link as a mechanical fuse. In order to protect your system uh, from overload. So let's take a look at uh, what are the stresses and uh, forces acting on a shelf. So Typical forces that you have already learned is like this lah. Torsion punya load dekat shaft. So you look at torsional rigidity. Torsional rigidity, uh, mungkin kamu label dia sebagai KT, torsional. Uh, it could be Newton meter. No. Radian per Newton meter. So, yeah. 
ataupun F is equal to Kx. F ni ada dari top. K ni kita punya K. X ni kita punya degrees. Uh, angular lah, angle. Kita pakai radian pun boleh lah, angle pun boleh. So, K sama dengan top per radian. Oh, terbalik eh. Newton meter per degrees. I think dia ada way around lah. Lebih, lebih tepat. Meaning, if you apply 1 Newton meter, berapa degrees dia akan rotate? This one is torsional rigidity. So you can really find out lah how uh, rigid your structure is. So torsion, kita dah biasa dengar. You've got also bending moment. You've got compressive forces. You've got tensile forces. And you also have shear. Shear forces lah in this case. Uh, opposite direction. So if you look, if you want to know uh, what are the forces acting on a shaft in a combined manner, uh, something like this. Uh. So how do you uh, find out the diameter is a suitable diameter for a shaft? So most of the time for shaft application, we are going to use something called maximum shear stress theory. A to M S S T. So ini dah belajar dulu dalam design for static. So we can uh, write down write down the formula and the diameter. Uh, you can get from this formula lah. So we are going to apply this formula, or you can apply this formula. These two things lah. So these two things, they consider dua benda lah, which is torque and also moment M. So meaning they consider uh, torque, torsional load, and also the bending moment. Adakah they consider axial load? Uh, not likely lah, not likely. Kita consider axial load lah. Kalau dalam formula ni, kita tak masukkan lah axial load tu. Hmm, for our class, for general application, most of the time, this one is enough. Ini dia dah consider dua-dua. T considering torque, M considering uh, bending moment. Macam mana nak dapat bending moment? Kamu memang kena plot uh, bending moment diagram. How does it look like? Bending moment diagram along the shaft. Use that one. So these are the uh, formula which is required. Kalau dulu masa belajar dalam strength of material, kamu pakai ni lah. Kita consider design shaft pakai torque saja. Ataupun kita boleh consider bending moment saja. Lepas tu we can combine lah. So formula-formula bawah ni, dia adalah combine. Because you've got moment and also you've got torque. Uh, Dua-dua dah consider lah. So we used uh, this one. Use this one. This is more accurate lah. So other than that, uh, this one later on I'll, I'll share. Ini tak patut lagi ikut no. <coughs> this is a good table lah. Huh? This uh, states down what is the relationship between uh, shear strength dengan ultimate tensile strength. Kenapa kita kena tahu shear strength? Sebab kita buat uh, shaft punya calculation. And most of the time, we're looking at the shear strength of the shaft. Typically, if you have all this material, 
for example, you've got ductile iron. It's about 0 0.9 lah. Comma ni titik lah actually. European countries, they don't use titik eh. Soalnya, dia orang letak comma. Comma is actually titik. 1.0 SU. SU stands for shear strength. U stands for ultimate tensile strength. So this is the relationship lah. Between tensile strength versus shear. This is an approximation. So shafts can be circular lah most of the time lah. Jarang lah kita jumpa shaft-shaft yang triangle no. Rectangle also never lah. Because you're going to have problem balancing lah if you're doing a rectangle one. Circle is much better lah. So if you uh, put your shaft connected to a motor, it's going to transmit power lah. So power, we can uh, link them using this formula. Power is equivalent to torque omega. So one horsepower, for example, is 746 watt. So you can find out uh, many things. Lah. So kita tekan kereta sikit. Let's say I have a machine. Machine is running at 3.5 horsepower. Okay. And it is running at 3,000 RPM. 3.5 horsepower, 3,000 RPM. How much is the torque currently being transmitted in this machine? Ha, cuba tekan calculator. How much torque? Lapan lima tujuh. Lapan lima tujuh. Newton meter? Hmm, Newton meter. Betul ke? Semua orang dah kira. Siapa yang orang kedua dapat jawapan yang sama? Power kan sir? Power kan? Bukan. Power. Eh, bukan. Power dah ada ni. Power. Oh, di bawah silak-silak. Okay, tekan sekali lagi. Tiga point lima house power, meaning tiga ekor setengah kuda. Boleh. Screen. Uh, white screen. Power sama dengan 3.5 kali 746 watt. Dapatlah. 3.5 host. 1 host 746 watt. 3.5 kali 746 so 2611 watt rpm tak ingat ah 2000 ke tadi 3 ke 2 3 3 okey 3000 ha 3000 rpm kamu kena convert kepada radian per second
baru kamu boleh guna formula tu. Power sama dengan torque omega. Oh, try. Dapat top punya value, bawah hampa boleh pilih lah. Nak pilih syah besar mana kan? Tidak ada top value, tak tahu load dia berapa. Boleh? Senanglah. 2611 sama dengan torque. Lepas tu kali dengan 2 pi n over 60. 2 pi n over 60 ni adalah formula untuk omega. So 2611 sama dengan torque. Kali 2 pi kali 3,000 bagi 60. Tok dapat. Unit dan Newton meter. Dapat. 8.3 8.31 Newton meter. So this is the torque value that is required untuk shaft kamu. Kalau ni lah. So torque value tu kamu nak kena letak dalam formula. Nah, ni formula ni lah. Ini torque value. Kena cari lagi satu benda which is moment. Bending moment tu nak kena cari dia macam mana? Kena tengok loading condition lah. Dia load kat mana, load macam mana. Nak dapatkan dia punya bending moment. Once we plug it in, we, we can have it lah. However, this is based on maximum shear stress theory. Typically for shaft, memang kita pakai MSST lah, shear stress theory. Ah, okay, so this is one problem. <coughs> Dalam problem ni dia bagi 5 horsepower, 5 horsepower. Shaft rotates at 175 RPM. Allowable shear stress for the steel. Shear stress allowable sama dengan 100 megapascal. Cari diameter. Yang ni dia tak letak load-load uh, yang lain lah. Dia letak uh, tok je lah. Bending moment tak ada. Dia tak cakap pun berapa force semua tu. So kita consider torque sahaja. Formula apa nak pakai? This one also can. Kamu pakai ni pun boleh. Ini dengan ini sama aja. Bila M ni kita cancel out. J sama dengan 5 per 2 C kuasa 4. Ha, pakai ni. Okay. Hmm, discard. 
Satu, dua, tiga. Ctrl C. Kita paste ni. These are some of the formulas that you can use. Ha ha mari kebaya. Let's do this. So, kalau kamu plugin ni kan, masukkan ni dalam ni. Kamu kena dapat shear stress sama dengan E C bagi pi 2 naik atas lah. C kuasa 4. So, ni kamu akan dapat 2 E bagi pi C kuasa 3. Shear sama dengan 2 T bagi pi C kuasa 3. Adakah ini sama dengan benda ni? Bila kita M ni kita cancel. M ni tak ada kan? Kosong. T kuasa 2 punca kuasa 2. Ha, sama lah. Sembiji sama dengan yang ni. 2 per pi C kuasa 3. T kuasa 2 punca kuasa 2. Jadi T je lah kan? 2 T. Semua dia ada extra once you have got moment. T itu mewakili apa kena? T itu adalah talk. T. Ya, T itu torque. M itu bending moment. Ha, boleh kah everyone? Okay, okay, alright. <laughs> Number one, again, you have to find out what is the torque. Power sama dengan torque omega. Power sama dengan torque 2 pi n over 60. Q 
lima horsepower. Lima kali tujuh, empat, enam. Sama dengan tok. Dua pi. Satu tujuh lima over enam puluh. Haa, sir. Haa. Kalau ada bentuk dalam radian per second, kena convert ke RPM dulu kan? Tak perlu dah. Oh, Kalau radian. Ha, sebab uh, omega sama dengan 2 pi n over 60. Omega ni unit dia radian per second omega. N, N ini adalah RPM. Kalau boleh bagi dah radian per second, uh, guna terus. Tapi mana ada mesin yang letak radian per second. So radian per second ni payah nak tahu lah. Payah kita nak estimate. We are very very used to rotation per minute. Rotation per second pun okey lagi. Kalau radian ni payah sikit lah. Radian ni uh, 2 pi lah kan. 2 pi is equivalent to 360 degrees. So, cari dulu berapa tok? 2.39. 2. 2.39. 2.39. Uh, it's always in Newton meter. So now we can plug it in lah. Ini dia cakap tak ada safety factor ke pemak nenek, tak ada lah. Dia letak kata seratus je. Kalau kamu ada safety factor, katalah dua. Maksudnya jangan pakai seratus, kamu kena pakai lima puluh je lah. Ini safety factor one lah ni. Ke ada salah kira ke? Sekejap. Lima, tujuh, empat, enam. Kali 60 Bagi 175 Bagi 2.5 Ya 2.03.5 2.03.5 2.03.5 Newton meter So if you plug it in You're gonna see Tau allowable sama dengan 2 per pi C kuasa 3 punca kuasa moment kuasa 2 tok oh, kuasa 2. This is the formula that you use. Cuma masalah tak ada moment. Tang out. Jadi 2T over pi C kuasa 3 sama dengan 100 darab 10 kuasa 6. Ini jadi 2 kali 203.5 pi C kuasa 3. P kuasa 3 sama dengan 2 kali 203.5 bahagi pi bahagi 100 darab 10 kuasa 6. Don't forget punca kuasa 3. Punca kuasa 3. Uh, what do you call this? root cube punca kuasa 3 Oh, slowly and slowly tekan calculator. 
and then a Rubik cube ah root cube dua kali 203.5 bahagi pi bahagi 100 eksponen 6 punca kuasa 3 kamu akan dapat berapa kasi 0.023 kamu dapat C dulu kan 0.0 0109 C tu radius So diameter Kena kali 2 lah 2 C Kali 2 Kamu akan dapat 0.0 218 Ataupun 21.8 mm Betul kamu betul. Patutnya dapat macam itulah. C stands for radius. So, taklah susah kan nak cari diameter of the shaft. Cuma saat lagi kita tambah moment tu je. Yang 2C tu sebab apa tu? Diameter kan? Haa diameter. C ni oh. adalah radius. Memang okay, formula dia macam tu. Nah, dapat kan? Okay. So, dapat jawapan. Kalau lah kita terpaksa consider bending moment kan. So, ini dia ada pulley tau. Pulley, satu pulley akan travel macam tu. Another pulley will go like this. So, bahagian yang tarik ni kita panggil uh, tension. Bahagian bawah ni, hmm, kita panggil slat ataupun kendo dalam uh, puli lah. Kamu tarik satu tension, satu lagi dia mengikut, so dia, dia kendo lah. Tapi, kita terpaksa delete lah eh, semua ni eh. Teng teng, hampir tengok lah, okey lah, hampir tersari ni kan. Teng, clear. So, bahagian yang tension tu. Katalah ini adalah 100 Newton. Eh mana boleh eh. Tadi kita dah kira kan. 203 Newton meter. Maksudnya katalah puli ni. Uh, puli ni kan. Katalah diameter dia ni. Diameter. Let's say this one is. 60cm puli Berapakah force Ini <coughs> Nampak ingat lah Torque sama dengan Force kali dengan radius. 203. Force tak tahu. Radius dia adalah 30cm. 30. Darab 10 kosong negatif 2. Ha, berapa tu force? Dua kosong tiga bahagi tiga puluh eksponen negatif dua enam tujuh tujuh. Hah? Radius. Radius ya. Tak sama dengan force kali radius. Baru dapat dua ratus tiga ni kan? Kata lepas puli ni diameter enam puluh. So, kalau tengok puli dari tepi, dia ada ini, force ni. Distance ni, 30 cm lah. So, kamu akan dapat force dia lebih kurang 
Enam, tujuh, tujuh. Newton. Kalau force dia tu ke arah sebalik ni? Uh, sama je lah. Sama je juga lah. Hmm, sama je lah. Enam tujuh tujuh Newton. Dapat saya. Mm -hmm. Dapat kan? So, kadang-kadang dia ada uh, ratio pula between uh, tension dengan slack. So, force ni macam tu kan? Force kat sini pun sebenarnya dia dua, macam tu arah, arah dia. Ini kita tak jumpa lagi lah. Nanti, nanti kamu akan jumpa. Sekejap saya cari beberapa soalan yang ada. Ha, macam ni. Sometimes you're going to see something like this. Dia akan ada pulley yang ada force. Dan ini 4 kilo newton. <coughs> So, berapa ketok kat sini? Ini 10. Kenapa empat ni arah macam ni? Kalau apa tak percaya arah ni kan? Ini adalah belt kan? Belt ni dia boleh duduk belakang ni lah. So, 4 kilo newton tu macam tu sebenarnya. 4 kilo newton. Cuma dia putak lah. Belt ni kan fleksibel. So, ini 10. Ini 4. Maksudnya efektif dia 6 lah. 6 kilo newton. Kali dengan radius dia pula. Uh, 100 mm. 6 kilo newton kali 0.1 meter. Dapat 0.6 kilo newton meter. Ataupun 600 newton meter. Boleh lah. Apa-apa lah. Uh, yang senang sikit eh. Inilah yang senang. <laughs> Okey. Okey, soalan. Uh... Apa soalan dia? Berapa kotak dekat sini? Ok. T O R Q U E berapa? Kamu boleh imagine ah kalau macam puli tadi tu kan. Kita dapat 677 Newton yang tadi ni, yang soalan tadi ni. Mana soalan tadi dah delete kan? 677 itu setelah ditolak tau. Dia, dia jadi efektif lah. Okay, tak apa. Cari ni dulu. Pelan-pelan kita belajar kan. Janji faham lah. Okay, dapat. Pa, bukan power eh, torque. Torque sama dengan force kali radius. Force dia adalah 10 tolak 4. 10 tolak 4 kali radius uh, 
0.1 lah. Enam, enam kali kosong poin satu, kosong poin enam kilo newton meter. Ha, ini. Okey, sekarang cari yang ni pula. Yang biru ni pula. Ha, ni, berapa pula ni? Kosong poin enam juga tu. Kosong poin enam juga tu. Ha, patutnya kena sama lah. Kalau so, lain tak apa jadi tu. Kalau lain tak boleh ha. Sebab satu datang dari motor. Satu datang daripada load. Katalah macam hampa nak putang kipas kan. Ha, ataupun whatever load lah. Apa yang kamu supply tu. Ada some, somebody yang terima dia lah. Memang dia kena macam tu lah. Baru ada equilibrium. Dia tak boleh satu lain, satu lain tak boleh. Ha? Berapa tok yang kamu supply, tok tu akan diterima oleh some, something. Ha? Motor kalau ataupun lain kalau lain dia tak boleh wujud lah, dia tak fizik lah. Kan setiap force ada reaction force. Ini apa? Force. Ini reaction force. Memang macam tu pun. Katalah kamu nak menggerakkan satu kipas. Kipas. Kipas ni nak bergerak. Katalah dia memerlukan 100 newton meter. So 100 newton meter tu akan disupply di supply oleh motor so memang dia akan dua benda tu je lah sistem kamu kalau kamu lukis dari tepi kamu kena buat kipas ok and then ada shaft and then ada pulley Ha, macam tu. Sini terima, uh, sini putak berapa? Kata dia putak. 100 newton meter. Sini akan terima berapa lah? 100 newton meter. Dia mesti ada equilibrium. Macam apa belajar equilibrium of static lah. Semua tu lah. Memang dia macam tu. Kalau kamu supply lebih, dia akan jalan lebih lah. Itu lah. Sistem. Dia mana boleh sini 120, sini 100 saja tak boleh lah. It doesn't work that way mathematically. In reality pun macam tu lah. Whenever you have a force, you will have a reaction force. So what I'm trying to say is, delete balik lah. Uh, shaft ni kan, kalau saya tengok dari atas kalau saya tengok dari atas sebenarnya dekat sini bukanlah 10 kilo newton dia sebenarnya adalah 10 campur 4 kilo newton tengok dari atas eh, ini apa A, ini D ini berapa? Top view. Total adalah 14 kilo newton. Lepas tu saya tengok daripada side view. Side view. Saya nampak macam tu. Dan force ke bawah ni. Is actually 6 campur 2. 
Lapan kilo Newton. Ya. Yeah. Ini part arah sini. Ini sepuluh arah sini. Dua-dua ni campur jadi empat belah. So tu. Lepas tu kamu boleh plot lah. Berapa bending moment dekat dia. Ingat lagi. How to plot bending moment. Yang kena potong-potong tu. Kena dapatkan reaction force berapa kat sini tu. Barulah value bending moment tu kamu kena plug in masuk dalam uh, formula yang tadi lah. Apa ni? Keep sekejap. Bending moment kadang-kadang kita nak cepat lah. Bending moment diagram calculator lah ni ada ni. Pakai ni dah. Beam guru. Katalah uh, length kamu se 1 meter lah. Meter lah. Dia pakai meter. So kita pakai hmm, 1 meter je lah. Oh tak ada. Okay unit kita millimeter. So 1000. Uh, support. Support kita dekat ujung. Simply supported on the left at, on the right at. Lepas tu load. Load saya, uh, yang ni boleh buang lah. Mungkin uh, 800 ni je kan. Location dia dekat mana, kena letak lah. Mungkin location dia tengah-tengah lah. -tengah, let's say tengah-tengah, so 500 lah. Save changes. Calculate. Hmm. <coughs> Kamu kan dapatlah bending moment dia berapa? Berapa maksimum dia? Di, nah, dia tak bagi ni. Dia suruh kita bayar ni. <coughs> Nanti lah saya cari. Mungkin ada lagi yang free. Get a detail report. Nah, saya akan bayar lah. So, Patutnya kita boleh uh, calculate manually lah. Tapi kadang-kadang nak double check pakai calculator macam ni pun okey je. Ni kan nak cari kat sini kan. Berapakah highest bending moment tu. Same thing lah you're gonna get here. Ini if I were to plot the particular bending moment. Mungkin saya akan dapat graph macam ni lah. Lepas tu yang ni pula saya akan dapat graf. Macam ni. Macam tu. Ini. Berapa ni? Paling tinggi ni. Moment. Ini. Moment. Berapa yang paling tinggi tu lah. Moment tu masukkan dalam formula. Which formula? Formula ni lah. Masuk dalam formula ni. And then you have considered both con condition lah. Okay. Senang kan? Ha. Adilai kata kalau dekat puli tu. Uh -huh. Dia suruh kita cari force dekat puli tu. Kan kita nak cari? Nak cari force dekat puli? Uh. Uh, force dekat puli. Kita akan belajar depan sikit. Dekat depan ni. Chains and belting ni. Hmm, ni. Dia uh, dia punya sains lebih lagi lah. <coughs> Ini uh, tajuk depan-depan sikit. Dia banyak lagi calculation sebenarnya. Dia ada something called tight side. Dia ada slack tight. Lepas tu kamu kena consider something called angle of contact and also friction coefficient. In reality, kita kena pakai formula macam ni lah. Dan uh, kalau kamu ada pulley, 
satu puli besar mungkin satu puli kecil so kita lukis besar sikit eh. satu puli yang besar satu puli yang agak kecil so puli tu dia akan ada contact point ini berapa contact point dia ini berapa contact point dia ini depan sikit kita belajar lebih detail lah. Ini uh, how do we get power transmitted. Tension 1, tolak tension 2 kali dengan velocity. Velocity ni uh, kita boleh derive daripada uh, omega tadi tu lah. Ini depan sikit. Tapi memang dia kena pakai all over lah. Bersepah benda datang ni. So that is how we calculate things like that lah. Mm -hmm. Plot the torque value along the shaft of the graph. Hmm, macam mana ni? Ada sikit masa lagi. Fikir tengok apa benda ni. Kita ada graph macam ni. Sini dia bagi 80 km. Ini... 150, yang ni 60, yang ni 10. So saya rasa yang ni lah dia punya source. 150 dia bagi kan? So 150, arah dia adalah ke bawah. Eh? Tengok ni, dia putar macam tu kan? Arah dia ke bawah lah. Lepas tu yang ni naik atas. 80 naik atas. Ini 180 kan. 60 pun naik atas. Yang ni. Lepas tu 10 pun naik atas juga. So dia mesti sama lah. Ini bukan 150 lah. 150. 150 mesti sama dengan 80 campur 60 campur 10. Kan. 150 mesti sama dengan 150. Apa yang turun bawah dia akan uh, ini kira supply lah. Supply yang ni load. Dia memang macam tu lah. When you have a shaft system dia mesti uh, ada equilibrium. So the point is, patutnya kamu kena lukis lah ni. Cuba lukis. Shaft kita macam tu. <coughs> Kalau dia sama, maknanya force dengan reaction force dia lah. Dia sama lah kan? Ha, dia actually load dengan supply lah. Ini supply. Supply. Ini load, load, load. Supply ni kita sama lah. Mm -hmm. Mesti sama. Kalau supply kurang, keseluruhan benda-benda lain pun kurang lah. Tapi janji dia mesti kena ada equilibrium lah. Ha, cuba lukis. Ini 80 kN. So sini. Counter clockwise positif lah kan? Uh, kita anggap atas positif. Mm, naik atas je lah. Tak apa. Atas naik atas. Oh turun bawah. Lepas tu ni turun lah. Dia akan turun. 80 tolak 150. Asal-asal dia 80. Location dia A ke B. Lepas tu dia tolak pula ha, 150. 80 tolak 150. 8 tolak 5. 80 tolak 150 Buat bending diagram atau? Lebih kurang macam sama Bukan bending, shear sure. sure. Negatif 70 Lepas tu dia naik atas balik 60 Negat Ini tadi uh, 
Clica assim. Negative tujuh puluh. Campur enam puluh. Sama dengan negative sepuluh. Tu dia akan naik. Patutnya saya rukis satu line aja lah eh. Betul ya. Ha, macam tu. Negatif 10. Lepas tu jadi kosong balik lah. Ha, boleh tak perlukan macam ni? Dia macam shear diagram lah. Tu, hampa tengok ni pun hampa tahu, oh paling teruk sekali kat mana? A ke B ke C ke D? A ke? Tak, paling teruk sekali kat sini. 150. Sebab tu lah uh, bila orang design kan kadang-kadang dia buat jalan tiba-tiba shaft tu jadi besar. Ujung kurus balik. Dia nak counter ni lah high torsion kat sini 150. Uh, sebab tu orang buat shaft tu dia ada step tu. Uh, dia bergantung pada maklumat-maklumat ni lah. Okay, last one. Buat ni pula. Last one. Lukis uh, tong diagram. Benda ni kita panggil tong diagram lah. Tong. Diagram. Buat satu line. Tengok je senang kan. 35 turun bawah. Ha, turun bawah lah. Tapi sini A eh. A sini. Ha, F sini. Kat sini ada B. C. D. E. Ah, senang lah. Sini turun bawah. 35. Lepas tu 20. Dia nak atas sikit. Negatif 35. Yang ni jadi negatif 15. Lepas tu dia naik lagi 20. Eh. Naik lagi. Okay, no? okay, balik lah. 35 tolak 20 dari 15. 15 naik 40. 25 lah sini lah. 25. Ha, lepas tu dia jadi 0 lah. So, ujung ni pun 25. Hopefully yang berdapat sama lah dengan saya. Ni, 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 ni. Ha, macam ni. Ini 15. Paling tinggi sini lah. Paling tinggi. 40. 
kilo newton meter. Eh, bukan kilo newton, newton saja. Okay, habis cerita. So, roughly, we learn a little bit. Later on, we'll do a more serious one lah. At least you guys know how to find shaft diameter. Tapi reality lebih susah lah. Reality ni apa nak kena produce diameter uh, drawing macam ni. Ini dah kerja apa? Nak uh, proceed dengan machining lah semua ni kan. Reality is much harder lah. Okay, ada ni beam calculator yang lebih murah dan free. I think this one sky sieve. <coughs> Beams, beam length satu meter at lagi habis ya. <laughs> tak boleh letak load pun. Benda lah mereka ni. Dekut tu lah. Kena bayar kot. Soft. Mana ni dia? Beam. Okay support. Ujung pin support dekat zero. Add. Lepas tu dekat one. Add. Okay. Lepas tu saya tekan back. Lepas tu saya tekan uh, point load. Point load position dia katalah 0.5 tengah-tengah. Magnitude dia katalah 20 kN. Ha macam tu. Lepas tu saya tekan solve. Sky shift ni saya rasa okay. Dia banyak juga bagi free. Dan kamu dapatlah bending moment. Berapa value? 5 kN meter. Shear force macam mana? And then I can go back to my model. Saya boleh letak lagi beberapa load lagi. Look at loads. I add more loads. Point loads. Position 0 0.75. Magnitude 15. I add one more load. I click solve. Now I get a better bending moment diagram lah. I need Sedang lah sikit kan. Tapi manual man calculation pun boleh je. Low sikit lah. Man calculation. So that's the thing lah. Cuma in reality dia akan jadi 3D. Okay habis. Uh, semalam hampa ada kelas tak? Malam. Malam masa. Ha. Last malam. night, Rabu malam. Tak ada. Tak ada. Kena tanya yang lain. Okey, nanti saya dalam grup lah. Hmm, sebab minggu depan saya pergi KL. Tapi minggu depan kita kena buat test. So, Mesti lagi saya buka malam lah, pukul 8 sampai 10 ke 2 jam. Online test. Nanti hampa upload lah. Component design. Stop recording. <laughs>